Hey everyone, thank you for joining me here on this video where I'm going to show you how to configure the breakout tool for CMLP on a Mac OS computer because it took me a while to figure it out and I finally got it. But before we get over to that, I wanted to talk about a new Discord community server that I just built. If you want to talk more about CMLP, some other uh, routing and switching topics, head over to roeldinicio.com slash Discord and join me there as we build up this new community to get some new certifications and, and talk more about network engineering topics. So why don't we dive into talking about CMLP and breakout because I did a previous live stream on the on the show version live stream where I gave a first look of CMLP which looked very promising but I wasn't able to get the breakout tool working on that on that live stream so I took a little bit deeper look into it and wanted to show you guys what I did so what we have here is okay here's my screen and I want to show you what I did so I have this lab this uh, CDP and L LLDP lab that I have going. But instead of having to use this console window uh, that's built into CMLP, I, I wanted to use my SSH, for example, or my, uh, my iTerm2 application. So the, C the, the breakout tool itself can be found if you click on this drop dropdown, um, actually go back to lab manager, click on tools, and then there's a breakout tool uh, link, which brings you to this CML tool tool uh, CML two breakout, and it goes into how to provide connectivity to the device console ports that are that are operating in your lab environment. So they have these three different applications which can be used on Linux, Mac OS, or Windows. For Windows, it looks pretty straightforward on what to do. For Mac OS and Linux, not so much. So this page here doesn't really tell you how to use those applications once you download it. They do show you these ex executable options, but that's about it. So if you scroll all the way down on this page, you should be able to download the necessary file. So you click on it, download it to your computer. So I have that already here. You can see I've downloaded it to this folder. So you want to download this breakout file to a specific folder because it'll create some YAML files for accessing these routers. So what I'm going to do is try to get it working again. And uh, what I want to do is open up terminal because there's something that we got to do here. So if I do a, a list here, you can see that the breakout tool is here in this directory let me zoom in a bit if you just in case you can't see it and uh, what I had to do with this file is make it executable so in order to do that you're gonna have to run chmod and then uh, for user you want to add executable there so we then identify it to the breakout tool because we're gonna run this file so now after I've entered that, and you may have to use sudo, for example, to do this. But if we look at the permissions or the executable there, it's we, we've got the executable for the user. From there, what's really interesting, and I'll clear the scroll back, is you can run it and you'll see some, some output. It'll, it'll say cannot be open because the developer cannot be verified. So I have some of those security uh, mechanisms put into Mac OS. But if I go back here to my finder and just right click the file and click on open, now I can run it and you'll see it run in a terminal window here and the process has completed, but it does give you a usage here. Right? And um, it, it's got the same parameters that we saw in the documentation. So I'm gonna close that and I'll run it here in this one because I prefer to use uh, iTerm2. So there it is again. You can actually see the text. It, it's missing a parameter, right? So what do we want to run here? We can run these parameters. The command is required. So you've got config, init, run, or UI. The easiest way to get started on this and to configure it is to run it with the UI parameter. And that'll give you the 
a web GUI to work off of for configuring the breakout utility. So there I, I have uh, ran that, that executable with the UI command right here. And you can see now that some web server got started up. A, a labs.yaml file says uh, it tried to open that file, but no such file or directory there. But it is running a, uh, a web server, which you can access it here. And then you just do control C to stop this web server. So why don't we browse to that web server? And that's just my local host. So there's the breakout tool. What we need to do is tell this breakout tool where our CMLP is located. So currently we have no labs. This is where your labs would show up if you, whatever you have in CMLP. So I have one lab going, it's running, but it doesn't show up here in the breakout utility. If we go to the configuration tab, here's where we could configure uh, how breakout utility is gonna find CML. So the controller address is incorrect here. So I will type in uh, the location of my CMLP instant, instance. Since we are using um, a certificate that, that uh, will will bring up a security warning. We want to disable that. So I'll disable verify TLS certificate. We want to put in a username and password, one that you could log into, that this utility can log into and get those labs. So I will use the admin account and just a simple password I'm using. These ports we can leave by default. And this is the labs file, file name that it's going to use. I will go back to Finder because you can see that there's no labs.yaml file located here, but we'll hit save and the configuration save. So we'll go back to labs and hopefully we can have something populated here. You can see there's no data, but on the right section right here, we'll just refresh the lab data from the controller. So it'll log in. And now we see a CDP and LLDP lab and the status is currently off. So if we look at this, uh, we, we, sh we see that this lab shows my switch one, switch two, and switch three, which ports it's uh, the serial ports that it's using to connect to that. So it looks like there's at least two that could be used, but one is enabled for each one. And currently it's, it has this link. From what I can tell now with this, I should be able to open my terminal and telnet to this port, right? So what exactly would that be? So here, this is the, the same server that's still running. I still have my lab here, which I'll open up in CMLP. These are my switches. And go back to terminal here. So what could we type out in our, because it's not clickable for me right now, serial zero, I'm using port 9000. So this here looks like an IPv6 address. It wants to use a local address, Telnet. So what I do is go back to my terminal. Let me increase the font size here and do Telnet 127.0.0.1 and the port, which is 9000 for switch one. If I hit enter, Telnet not found because I don't have Telnet installed on this laptop. So we got to install that. What I'm gonna do is because I have brew installed on this laptop, I'm gonna do brew install telnet. This should be able to go and grab the, the files that are necessary to install the telnet packages. And telnet's not typically used in, in a real world environment, but when we're dealing with uh, CMLP, uh, the Cisco modeling labs, the personal edition, we're just using Telnet to use it as a way to console into our lab environment. And what I'm doing here with this specific command, as, as you can see uh, right here, what we wanna do is just Telnet, use that statement. We are Telnetting to the local host, which is my computer right here, the one that I'm using and we're using the console port that was given to me 
by the breakout utility on connecting to that specific switch, with it, which is switch number one that I have labeled. And so that's what we're we're trying to do here. And I'm I'm waiting for Homebrew to update. So let me pause the video real quick to let Homebrew do its thing. Okay, finally, we have Homebrew completing its update and installing Telnet. So what I want to do is clear this. We'll go back up. And again, we want to Telnet to the local host, which is my breakout where my breakout utility is installed. And I'm using port 9000 to use that console port to go to switch one. Hit enter. Unable to connect because... God knows why. <laughs> what I'm going to do is Telnet localhost instead. And port 9000. Still unable to connect. Got to figure out that why this is not working. This is what I have to do to figure out why to, to get breakout utility working. Okay. I forgot to do one thing. I have a connection refused. I'm running breakout utility. Let's go back to breakout. And I'll show you exactly why. In my list of my labs, the status is off. I believe if I turn this on, we should be able to get this working. All right, so we'll go back into it. It's enabled. Now we've got a green status of the serial zero. I totally skipped over that. I should have looked at that much more clearly. Let me clear the scroll back, go back to localhost. Look, we've connected to localhost, hit enter. We're getting the banner. I can do enable, show IP interface brief. I've got four interfaces up, show uh, CDP neighbor. And you can see I got switch two and switch three connected. All right, so there you have it. I'm able to connect to my switches now just by doing telnet and then localhost 9002, I believe, yep. We're now into my other switch, switch two. This is, this is much easier to use now using my favorite terminal application, iTerm2, in order to connect to my lab devices. That's how we configured the breakout utility. So in summary, download the breakout utility from, the, from CML, P under uh, lab manager, go to tools and click on breakout, which will bring you to the documentation page. Scroll all the way to the bottom, download the file, put it in its own folder, give it executable permissions, run the UI in which then you could log on to localhost colon 8080. Then you're going to have to go to the configuration tab, give it the controller address where your CMLP lives uncheck verify tls certificate and then put in the credentials to log in so it can go and grab the labs when you refresh this page just be sure the status is on when you want to connect to those lab devices on those serial ports you'll want to look for the green status to show that it is running and then if we actually go back to uh, finder we can see now there is a YAML file. So what this YAML file contains is a configuration in which the, C, uh, the, the breakout utility is going to use. As you can see here, we've got, if you scroll down, the console start port starts at 9,000. We could change that if we wanted to. Here's the controller uh, address, the lab config file name, labs.yaml. And here is the username, uh, which is admin. And I just have a password of Cisco just for this lab to show you how this labs.yaml file is going to be used and populate those, uh, those labs for you. There you have it. That's how I was able to configure the breakout utility for CMLP. I would love to discuss more CMLP with you if you want to head over to my brand new Discord server, which I'm calling Network Junkies, where we can talk about various topics about network engineering. I hope you enjoyed this lab and you find it useful for your studies with CMLP. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you.